So Marvin's actions in the last episode of Raising Kanan, of leaving Kanan on his own at the stash house, cost the Thomas family half their stash, which Unique and his boys stole. We can argue that it was Kanan who was the one who gave up the location to the stash house in the first place, and they would never have been in the position if Kanan wasn't so foolish and trusting in Davina. But Marvin does also have to take the fair share of the blame with what went down in episode 4 as well, taking Kanan to the stash house and putting him to work on something he's clearly not ready for. And on top of all of that, he left him alone. And this scene clearly tells us why Marvin is someone who never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity but we're going to dive deep into all things Marvin, his role in the last episode and his role next week and what we can expect from him and dissecting some of the key conversations down which will foreshadow what's to come with Jukebox as well. But of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything Power Book 3 and Power Universe related over the coming months. But let's talk about these key conversations that Marvin had after dealing with Tony. She tried to cuddle up to Marvin and he wasn't having any of it. He wasn't someone there to be in a relationship with Tony, making it clear that there's clear differences between the two in so many ways, but she pressed him on whether he prefers cuddling up to a black guy from South Jamaica. His response was, I know you didn't just call me a fagger. And the reason why this conversation is so important is because of his relationship that he has with Jukebox and the breakdown of their relationship which is something we haven't seen yet. He just told us in episode 4 that he's clearly someone who doesn't accept gays and it's going to be the same case with Jukebox and it's just a little clue and a foreshadow to what we can expect when Jukebox and Marvin do sit down and have this conversation there's going to be some home truths that come out between the two and I do think it's going to happen this season, especially after Duke opened up to Raquel. So that's just a bit of a deeper look into the conversation which went down with Marvin and Tony and this will foreshadow what's to come between Marvin and Jukebox. But aside from this, him taking LT was funny as fuck and it actually does show he does care. He shows his loyalty when it comes to his dog. We notice him taking the dog food from the shelves for his dog as well and his dog is always going to be eating, just like his owner. But just like his owner, he needs training according to Lulu and I do agree to a certain extent but I'm going to talk about why Lulu is right first of all and then I'm going to come to why I disagree. So Marvin in the last episode showed us why he's no longer the man in charge of the Thomas organization something we learned in episode 1 when Raquel put him in his place telling him that he's not fit to stand in her shoes but in the last episode episode 4 don't sleep he was tasked with moving the stash from the current location which was their stash house over to the bodega after they'd got all the security set up and the doors reinforced Scrappy came down with the shits so he asked Kanan and if he had a better relationship with his daughter then he probably would have been better off asking Jukebox because she would have actually been able to handle the situation a lot better than Kanan would have we've seen her plan robberies before with the lookouts and having everything planned so I think Jukebox would have been the right person to help Marvin but we know she doesn't get into the shit that Marvin's into but asking Kanan was one thing and leaving him on his own was another. He does come back and he does what he does. He's aggressive, he's straightforward and he doesn't pull any punches. He goes straight for Unique and his boys in his car and I do have to say this was a little reckless from him because he had the jump on them and I was just thinking about what could Marvin have done differently and it made me think about the time where Ghost came to Tommy's rescue during the shootout outside the church when the Koreans came to light up Tommy. Ghost knew the location of where the shootout was going to happen and he came hooded. He came ready. He lit the Koreans up and he disappeared into the night just like a ghost and you really have to appreciate what we saw in power and how good he was. He was good at being 3 moves ahead and making these ghost like moves. And this is something Marvin could have done because he had the jump on Unique's boys. He could have circled back and hit them in a way where they wouldn't expect it. But Marvin's someone who never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. And unfortunately for Marvin, he did miss his shot. But one shot he didn't miss was this. And he's going to make up for it. This is where I'm going to slightly disagree with what Lulu said. When the opportunity does present itself, I do think Marvin would make up for his and Kanan's mistakes and be the man to take it to Unique. And he's the only one capable of taking it to him. And I do feel he's the man to take it to Unique and his crew when the time is right with Raquel and Lulu's plan planning and a lot more soldiers of course. He's already killed one of his boys and I'm sure there's a lot more deaths to come. And I just want to clear something up because I had so many comments saying are we not going to talk about how Marvin said you know whose son this is and people were saying how Marvin said that Kanan was Unique's son but Marvin was actually saying do you know whose son this is meaning Raquel's because you do not want to get on the bad side of Raquel because we've all seen what happens when you do get on the bad side of Raquel. Now Kanan is definitely not Unique's son and it was made clear in episode 1 during the ending scene during Raquel and Unique's second meeting where Unique said that Kanan is hers and Defcon boy. He spoke about how Raquel will always have this connection to Kanan that he'll never have with his own son. He spoke about his own son called Jerome but he doesn't care for him the same way Raquel does with Kanan. And we may be introduced to Jerome at some point in the future. We don't know how old he is or what he does but we could definitely meet him in the future for sure. But Marvin saying do you know whose boy this is? He was definitely just referring to Raquel and not Unique so I thought I'd just clear that one up. But back to the relationship between Kanan and Marvin and how he's the one showing Kanan the game. This is just the beginning. Kanan still got so much more to learn. We're going to see this partnership a lot more and we're going to see Kanan and Marvin grow together, help each other. Marvin's going to be the one who shows Kanan how to clean a gun, how to protect himself.
basically the complete opposite of what Raquel wants from Kanan at this moment in time, which is him starting at the bottom of the family business. We've already seen him teaching Kanan what to sell and how much he can sell it for, but the theme of this video is about looking at key conversations, and I just want to take it back to the original Power series to this scene. We have to go back to season 1 in the timeline, where Tommy told us that Kanan was the original person who taught them about the chop shop, with how they used to cut bodies up into pieces, and this is such a Marvin thing to do. I can see Marvin being someone who teaches Kanan how to get rid of bodies by chopping them up, so I really wouldn't be surprised to see this at some point in the future. Because it's safe to say it definitely won't be happening anytime soon because Kanan could barely handle the death and the blood of Unique's boy splattering all over him, so he definitely won't be able to handle something like the chop shop and chopping up a body just yet, but in time he will do. And yesterday I spoke about the timeline of power and how in 1992 we could really see a different side to Kanan, so I'm gonna link this video down below if you haven't seen it. I give a real insight into why we could really see a different side to Kanan in 1992. But let's talk about what's to come from Marvin with what we saw in the trailer and there were a few comments on my trailer breakdown video which I'm just going to pop up now which shone some light into what this scene is all about with Marvin. In episode 4 we saw Raquel speaking to this landlord and this landlord owns these block of apartments where she wanted two rooms, one on top of the other but it would mean they'd have to kick some of the tenants out in these rooms and this is the same landlord that was in the trailer for episode 5. So this scene is where Marvin seems to be beating someone up who could be someone refusing to leave their apartment and why we see Marvin turn real aggressive after he gets a nod from Raquel. So I do expect there to be a lot of aggression, action and possibly another death or two from Marvin's side. I did get a comment or two predicting Marvin's death but it's just way too soon for Marvin to die. I have said previously that I do think a character or two will remain at the end of raising Kanan and tie into the whole power universe but because of the nature of Marvin's character he is someone that will die at some point but definitely not now and definitely not this season. But that's just a breakdown of Marvin's character past, present and what we can expect from him going into episode 5 as well and I do wonder how the conversation is going to go down between Raquel and Marvin about the stash house because because she gave the job to Marvin for a reason. He's a muscle and he fucked it up too. But of course they would never have been in this position if Kanan never gave up the stash house location up to Davina. And the bloody shirt that Raquel found will definitely play a part next week. So let's see if Kanan can lie his way out of this one. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section about Marvin's conversation with Tony, his relationship with Kanan from what we've seen so far and what's to come, especially the chop shop that Kanan still needs to learn, which we learned from Tommy in Power Season 1. Drop all your thoughts on Marvin down below in the comment section and of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything power book 3 and power universe related over the coming months but as always thank you guys for watching and i'll see you next time